Hey, what's going on everyone? If you're watching the replay, you're probably seeing uh, my lips a little delayed. Uh, if you are live, you're going to probably see them delayed as well. Welcome to this behind the scenes Periscope. I'm going to go ahead and now here we are. Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm going to actually have to do this, I think. I'm going to have to bring this around so we can see in the background. Guys, say something. See what's going on back there? I think I got to turn myself off so I don't keep popping in there. Come on, say something, Rich. Rich is watching you, watching him, watching you. I'm Danny Brewer. All right, guys, if you guys are watching this right now, I'm doing a little, um, well, I'm doing a little behind the scenes. We just recorded. Yeah, congrats on 100 episodes. It's not, it's recorded, but now um, it's going to be aired probably. Uh, well, I think it's September 18th, I think. Um, so why don't we get a little shout out going here. If you guys are tuning in right now, go ahead and leave your name and then your, um, your location. I've got, um, hi Scott from England. I got, um, Oliver from Paris. Um, you can click their picks and they stay on screen. Oh, okay. I got to click on your, your, uh, I guess your icons there and you'll stay on the screen. I'm Jason from Hawaii, Chris from Dallas, Texas. Um, is that you, Chris? That's Chris Schaefer. You ding dong. Uh, hey Scott, it's Ebony from uh, Charlotte. Hey, I I uh, I met Ebony in um, I had that little meet up there with her. Uh, let's see, Kimberly from Las Vegas, Angus from London, your favorite Dave from New Jersey. Uh, let's see, Kevin from New Jersey, Marcus from Sweden, Tom in Charlotte. Uh, this is cool, Charlotte again, another one. Bill from Boston. Bill is back. What's up, Bill? Fist pump. Uh, let's go. William from Indianapolis. Uh, we've got a bunch coming in. We got about 40, 40 some on right now. Malcolm from Vancouver. What is going on? Rob from Texas. Rob is from Texas as well. Val from Arizona. Scott, Ellie in Charlotte. Hey, Ellie was another one at the round table that we did. Um, but yeah, right now what we're doing, let's see. Chris from Nashville. Hey, man. Uh, Weston in Florida. What we're doing right now is we just did a recording. I gotta try to switch my hands here. Um, we just did a recording for the um, the podcast, and actually, my wife's coming home now too. This is gonna be interesting. My dog's gonna bark. This is totally live. There's nothing I can do either, guys. There's nothing I can do right now other than say that we're gonna get caught in a periscope, and it's gonna be totally live. So um, I apologize. Uh, let me get this back over here. Um, all right, so we're going to have to kind of do this quick because it's going to be crazy. Uh, Brody's going to bark. What I wanted to do is I wanted to get some questions going here. We just answered a bunch. We talked about our launch process going through this whole thing. Um, you guys got any questions you want to ask Danny Brewer or Chris Schaefer, who's a rock star? Uh, or Chris, uh, did I say Chris Schaefer? Chris Schaefer, Rich Kibble, Danny Brewer. Um, let, let's, have, let's have a question. What kind of question do you want to ask? And again, this is going to be live. The dog's going to bark here in one second. I'm not even kidding. Are you ready? This is, this is totally live. Let's see if we get any questions here, guys. I got to get, get this, this computer over. My monitor is like huge. I can't get it over there. Let's see. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Come on, any questions? Lots of TAS Facebook listings have about hijacking. Should I be concerned? Wow. We did. All right. Topic of discussion. It seems to be I see it popping up all the time, uh, but you know, there's things you could do to. If you're saying should I be concerned and you don't have a product up, don't panic about it. Um, you know, don't let that stop you. Chris was mentioning before that he uh, that he feels like there's a few steps you could take. You wanna you wanna take yeah. that one, Chris? I'll jump in on that. There's there's two big steps. Hey, Chris, hold on a second. One second, guys. Let me know if you can hear Chris. Chris, keep talking. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Is anybody else? Yes, I, I got some yeses, so go ahead, continue. So there's two big steps that you can take. The first one is going to be creating a unique product, right? Don't just take the garlic press that your manufacturer makes and throw it up on Amazon. Add a handle to it. Make the handle longer. Add an accessory to it pull a kibble and bring two of the greatest products in the market together and create a bundle. That's the biggest hijackers are lazy by trade, right? They're trying to capitalize off of something that you've already done. Yep. If it's harder for them to do it, they're not going to do it. They're going to find somebody who is also lazy and didn't take that extra step. Right. 
The second thing that you can do is go through the brand registry process. Now, this is not going to stop you from getting hijacked. Anyone can still list on your listing. What this does is it gives you more granular control over the listing elements, like your product photo and your product title. And a lot of the nightmare scenarios that we hear people talking about where like somebody listed on their thing and then they change their photo. So when they do a test buy from Amazon, it matches the photo. And so they can't get the person removed. You lock that down. You are the only person that can control the title, the content inside of the listing and the photos. From there, if they decide to list on it, you just go through the product, not as advertised process. You purchase one of the units, you take a bunch of pictures of it, you go, hey, Amazon, this isn't what's supposed to be on the listing. They credit you back for the purpose. And they pay the nice. That was great. Boom. 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 Uh, there we go. So that was from... That was from Chris Schaefer, um, and I, I agree with everything he just said, and if you guys didn't hear that, I apologize, but basically, brand registry, pretty simple. Um, someone says, Dave says, uh, so no one can edit your listing at, at all when your brand is registered. That's not true, correct? No, they can still they can still make some changes. They're just limited in what they can change. They're they're limited in what they can change, but yes, they 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 could. Um, but it definitely is going to help you um, fight that. So does that make sense, Chris? Yeah. Just get you a big bicep. Just just Danny says, get yourself a big bicep. What does that mean, Danny? Well, you know. If you're arm wrestling with another seller over content on the listing, you're going to win if you're the brand register. Most of the time, Amazon will take your side if, you know, you file a complaint that you'd like to have a change back, basically. There you go. I like it. So basically being in, a, in, in the brand registry is going to allow you to give you a little more muscle. Um, all right. Any more questions, guys? We're live here. We just finished up the 100th episode. We recorded it. I wanted to do this live scope. What if you find a supplier, but their product offer is already being private labeled by someone? Yeah. Anyone? That, that comes back down to the, the number one thing you can do to stop people from hijacking your listing, which is differentiate. Right. Bundle it with another product. You are technically allowed to private label that. But why would you want to? If there's already somebody on Amazon selling that exact product, figure out a way to differentiate it. Add a, a garlic storage bag, create a longer handle, change it a little bit, and then you have a unique product. If that's the supplier that you want to go with and you really like the product, figure out a, made a, a way to make it work, but take that extra step to make it unique. Well said, Chris Schaefer. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. Um, any more questions, guys? we got a couple more minutes here. My wife hasn't come in. She might have actually thought I was still recording, so she might have hit out back. Um, any tips for market research other than Google Trends? Want to talk about that? Google Trends, you're the guy on Google Trends. God's the man. Well, I think, I think, they, I, I think they said... Um, Someone just Zach just said, "Okay, cool. He'll get a beer from me." So Chris, you got a beer coming? Um, he said that works. That works. Yeah, Danny just said he's got a question because he's thirsty. Um, yeah, yeah. Zach, Zach's laughing. Uh, okay, so the question was: Is there any way to get ideas other than Google Trends? Was that the question? Because I don't necessarily think you go into Google Trends for for uh, getting ideas. Um, you could, but I would go in there more or less to see how much demand is during certain times of the year. That's what I would use the Google Trends for. I think uh, I think what he's looking for there, Scott, is another place to look like Google Trends to validate his product. Camel, camel, camel. Camel, camel, camel. Exactly. Right? Camel, camel, camel. If you guys haven't heard of that, it's camel, camel, camel dot com. And that is a free service. They give you the sales uh, data or the sales um, price that's been selling for the past well, however long they've been selling. Could be a year, could be two years. And then um, the BSR will give you that over the course of however long they've been selling. A really, really useful tool. Um, so that's that one. Um, and that's a great one to kind of see the different peaks and valleys. Uh, anyone else have a quick question? We are live, gentlemen. I like live. This is cool, right? I mean, here we are. Yeah. Is is your supplier giving you FOB price or EXW? What is the difference between both? Um, 
FOB is basically meaning they're going to bring it to the or they're going to have it picked up at the port. Is that right? Right. FOB takes it from the supplier to the port. X works means you're responsible from the factory everywhere else. That neither of those are the terms that you want unless you're a logistics person. Exactly. What you want is just ask them for a quote of air door to door or DDP, which is the logistics term for delivery duty paid which means the quote that they're going to give you is for from the factory to your house, including customs, theoretically, um, assuming they calculate that correctly. Um, But that's going to be the closest thing that you're going to get, and then they're delivering it to your house. Most of these suppliers, if you don't specify that, will give you either EXW, which is Xworks pricing, or FOB, which is basically they'll take it to the closest port and leave it there. Yeah, I like DHL myself. Makes it real easy. They bring it right to the door, door to door. Ask for DHL, uh, door to door, or Fed- FedEx, even um, that. Uh, Charles is joining us from Georgia. Hey, Charles, what's up? What's what was the price to stay under to to save money on customs again? Twenty five hundred before shipping. Uh, I believe it's two thousand, isn't it? Yeah, because I, I've gotten some for twenty four hundred, and it's hit me about three hundred bucks for twenty four hundred dollars. So. Yeah, I would I would try to stay under two thousand now. Yeah, I, I think two thousand is the magic number uh, on that one. To be honest with you, um, oh, let me remind these guys too. Hold on, hold on, guys. Um, actually, you guys, the ones that's on on the hangout right now with me, not not you guys. Um, hey, if you guys uh, want to give us some love, definitely keep those hearts coming. Tap on that screen, double tap, get them, get those babies going. If you're watching the replay, you can also leave hearts. That just means that you guys are enjoying what we're doing here today. Um, and if you guys have not shared this yet, do me a favor and do that as well. Swipe on the screen, hit share, share it with your followers, uh, your Twitter followers, and just let people know about it on uh, on Facebook or whatever. That would be awesome. Couple, let's answer two more questions. Two more questions. Two more questions. What do we got? The hearts are still coming in. They look very, very colorful. Beautiful. I love hearts. <laughs> Danny da- or uh, Rich Kibble. Rich Kibble, say something, Rich, and show your heart. I'm making my hearts. They, uh, this is like old school, old school heart giving. Right here. I don't need no fancy technology. That is. It came out Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, je- okay. So, if you guys know any more questions, okay, wait a minute. Uh, uh, any MOQ hacks to share? I always, uh, I mean, you know, you just got to talk to them. A lot of times they'll, and you got to be persistent with it. If they, I've had suppliers that have told me they've started out 3,000 and I ended up getting them down to, you know, under 1,000 uh, eventually because they come back to you. I think a lot of it is, is sounding professional as well. You know, they if they feel like you're a you're going to be a good customer and a good a good uh, client down the line, then you can um, – they just seem to be more apt to be able to deal with you. If you're telling them, hey, I'm going to buy 500, but – you know, I've had other products and it's going to, you know, we're going to ramp, our plan is to ramp it up if it sells, but for our first cooperation, we only need, this is how we work. We, we do 500, we test the market and then we, we move on from there. A lot of times if you sound authoritative and, and like, you know what you're talking about, uh, they seem to give you a little more play. I, uh, I sometimes go all the way through the buying process and, uh, then I might say, well, you know, that other color or that other variety, if, if I ordered that, which means pretty much double the order, uh, can I get like a 25% discount? First of all, that's just good for the for the pricing. And it, it, they'll never come down that much, but they, they make it sound like, oh, man, this guy's a big-time player down the road. And then when they come back, say, well, that's not really big enough discount, but let's go ahead and try out this here for, you know, this amount just get me started and then in the future we can discuss it since this is the first time ordering from you dude. let's build a relationship first yeah maybe it works maybe it don't then the other place is uh if you don't have that type of cash to start off with and you need to go to like aliexpress or something like that that's uh, got a smaller moq for your budget i mean you don't always have to go through alibaba and buy three thousand you can go somewhere else buy uh you know 50 100 uh, pay a little bit more up front, but find out if it's viable or not. And if it is, then then get real creative with your negotiations. Yeah, so, I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I'm 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 on board with all that. 
Uh, just sharing, added a, an accessory and went from five to 10 sales a day to 25 to 30. So accessories work, folks. Dave Williams. Boom. Yeah. Right. Um, right. How do you project uh, how much inventory to order for November and December to make sure you have enough? I would look at Google Trends and I would look at uh, Camel, Camel, Camel at your competitors. Cross um, your fingers and pray. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, you can never over prepare, is what I hear. Yeah, and, you know, this is something that we've talked about a couple times now, and it comes down to. You know, last year we saw roughly one and a half to two times in December what we normally see. Like, you know, October is kind of a normal month, and then November goes up to like one and a half, and then December hits like 2x, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can bank on having two times the amount of inventory that you need, you will probably be okay. Um, something weird could happen, and you could really spike, and then you could stock out. But you know, you you can never account for all of those scenarios. The other thing is to try and get Brody can hear me now, can he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I told you this is live. We're scoping right now, and we've got the dog coming in, and we've got yeah Brody in the house. Bill says that's right. Brody is he's been here. It's just now my wife and my daughter came home, which is which she is just fine. Scooped him up in the background there. Oh, did she? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bent over and came back up with the dog. Uh, the other thing is to get your inventory in early. Yeah. The biggest problem that I saw sellers running into last year was they were stocking out like December 10th because mm -hmm. they sent in inventory the first week of December hoping it would be there before Christmas. Amazon gets a metric ton of shipments around that time because everybody has the same issue. They're all stocking out at the same time, right? So if you can send it, you know, my kind of internal deadline for us is the second week in November. Right. And even that's kind of pushing it. Right. So we're going to try to get everything we can in before like November 14th and 15th with the hope that when we would normally stock out like two days before Christmas, that we'll have enough inventory to carry us through Christmas and the new year. The other thing that's weird with Amazon is you hit January and sales don't fall off the face of the earth. They stay high. Right. Um, so having that extra little bit of inventory, even if you a little over ordered a little bit for Christmas, will benefit you in January and February. Well, I will say that uh, I live uh, about a half a mile from the fulfillment center here in Indianapolis. If any of you guys have ever had to send your stuff here, but come November, there will be traffic jams day and night going to Amazon and people going to work. That's the only month that it happens from November. To Christmas, and I mean traffic jams of the extra personnel that they bring in just for the one month. And I'm talking they they bring five different police officers out to direct traffic. I mean it, it's crazy the extra hands that they bring in just for the one month. So if you're thinking that an extra, you know, 1,300 cars a day just for one fulfillment center, uh, not to mention that. Uh, they also have shuttle buses and drop-off stations where people from downtown or don't have cars because they don't. There's nowhere to park it at Amazon. Uh, they shuttle people in on you know metro buses and stuff like that. So it, it's it's huge. I mean, I live right down the street from them, and I, I really hate December because of it. But you know, I kind of love it now. <laughs> Now, Danny, I have to say, though, I was a little nervous when you started talking there because I'm holding this with my arm, and I thought my arm was going to break off because you're normally a little long-winded. Um, <laughs> I love Danny. Don't get me wrong. I love you, bro. But he, he's usually long-winded, and he likes to talk, especially in Texas when he's got a few cocktails. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, okay, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this little behind the scenes. I wanted to kind of do this because I had these guys on the line, and I said, you know what? I'm going to just fire up the old scope and we'll, we'll do a live little behind the scenes. So the episode we just recorded was what we would do differently moving forward in 2016 from what we've learned. And, uh, and then just, we really just kind of deep dive into some of those other, um, areas of the launch process, choosing a product, all of that good stuff. So you're going to want to definitely pay attention. Um, and I don't think I told you guys, but, uh, we're, we're, uh, up over 1,200,000 downloads as of the beginning of hearts, the hearts, 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 put hearts up there, baby. Put hearts up for the downloads. <laughs> put them up. Hearts, Come on. Hearts, hearts. <laughs> 
Zach says, thanks for your time, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Looks like Wade said, awesome, Scott. A uh, bunch of people still jamming with the hearts. Can you guys see the hearts? No, I can't see them. That's why no, I'm going to scream it. I see them now, yeah. That's a lot of hearts. A lot of love right there, fellas, huh? Mm. All right. So um, that's going to pretty much wrap it up, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, wait a minute. I got to close out. I got to say it like like I always do. Remember, guys, I'm here for you. I believe in you. I'm rooting for you. But you have to. You have to do what? Take action. <laughs> that's right. Live the dream. Take action, Bill says. Everyone else is saying take action. See, guys? Look. There you go. There's they're smart. They know what they're doing. All right, guys. Have an awesome uh, weekend, uh, rest of your day or morning, wherever you're tuning in from. And uh, we'll see you again real soon.